the reason we're working at the single cell level is because the brain is inherently a complex tissue with many different cell types. And if we want to understand what's unique about each different cell type, we want to be able to measure them one at a time. Different cells in each different tissue have unique jobs. And it's been hard to study that. It's been hard to really understand what's happening in, in very unique and rare cell types. And so I was very interested to start understanding how to measure single cells. Some techniques we're doing amplify material from one cell at a time. Others allow us to multiplex many cells together. And I think it's a, it's a very powerful technique. The tissue processing group is responsible for prepping tissue for the in vitro single cell characterization pipeline. So you take your tissue and you slice it into very thin slices using a vibratome or a compressed tome. After we slice the tissue very thinly, we take each individual slice and look at it underneath the microscope um, in both bright field and fluorescence. Uh, we then take images of that. We then compare those images to the alum brain atlas and determine where our region of interest is. We then take uh, tiny micro dissection tools and dissect out the area and collect them, all of the areas, into a small epi tube. We use enzymes to digest the tissue and then we use glass pipettes to manually triturate it into a single cell suspension. We have something called a flow cytometer, which is a fluidics device with a lot of lasers to help monitor the profiles of the cells. And using a computer, you can tell the cytometer a very specific profile of cells that you want to actually collect. And so using this device, we can collect one cell per well, and we can amplify one cell away from all the other cells. We can collect a lot of cells very quickly this way. We can sort many, many single cells, and we can also sort populations of cells. And so it's extremely adaptable to whatever the experiment demands. And what we're hoping to do with that in the in vitro human cell types group is to start understanding how the connections are established, how they're related to each other by lineage. After sorting the cells, we amplify RNA from single cells into cDNA libraries. Different teams are using different methods to do the amplification part. There's a genome-wide method where either the full length of the RNA is amplified or the 5' or the 3' of the end of the RNA is amplified. That is called smarter amplification. Each well is a single cell and I put in reagents and then I bring it over to the PCR and to amplify into cDNA. After we get our amplified cDNA, we want to quantify and see how much we have. So we use the bioanalyzer to quantify our cDNA. To look at specific genes in, for, in the RNA, we use a different method and different machine called the Fluidine Biomark. That is a high throughput qPCR where it does 96 different samples at the same time. After we make the RNA into cDNA, we can sequence it um, either in-house on our MySeq, which is a low-depth sequencer, or we can send it out for high-seq for deeper sequencing. Once the cells are profiled, to make sure that all the data that we're getting, that nothing in the process of extracting the cells or preparing the libraries went wrong. And we also have these spike-in controls. We spike in a known amount of an exogenous or non-natural RNA. And because we know exactly how much went into each of them, our readout from the sequencing or the qPCR should reflect the relative amounts of these extra species. That indicates that along the entire process that nothing's gone wrong. Then the next step is to actually do the data analysis. One of the things we do is we use a lot of what are called unsupervised clustering methods. So in other words, you just give the algorithm the data and you let it sort itself out in terms of identifying which cell types we think are actually present. We go back and we ask or design experiments to verify that these are indeed distinct cell types. So when we're looking at a heat map, what we ide ideally want to see are large blocks that are the same color. 
and that indicates that there are cells that are very close in their actual molecular transcriptomic profile. When you look at those horizontal plots, you see in a certain region that those genes are expressed very highly, which indicates that there's some genetic signature that actually unifies those cells into a single type. So it's really exciting to be here on the front edge of things. When you want to understand a system that you know little about, you want to describe building blocks. We hope to generate something similar to previous atlases. We would like to catalog, describe, and categorize all the building blocks of a visual system at the cellular level. This type of work has never been done before. This is really, this is really the first time somebody's trying to do it systematically, comprehensively, and looking at different types of characteristics, all on the same cells and all comprehensively. We are really blessed that we have the founder who has allowed us to do these kinds of things that almost no place in the world can afford to do. Everybody loves what comes out of encyclopedic projects, but very few places can afford to do that. And we are really special that we can do that.